Hey everybody, it's Webby. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today it's really exciting. We've actually got a new manufacturer joining the channel. Uh, MG have very kindly uh, agreed to lend me some cars to review, so that's really exciting. Uh, the first one we're starting off with is this, which is the HS Plus EV SUV. Uh, so it's actually a plug-in hybrid. Uh, so for a lot of people that don't understand what a plug-in hybrid is, I'll give you a very quick introduction. So your traditional hybrid is something like a Toyota Camry or a Corolla or something like that, where the battery charges as you're driving along. But the plug-in hybrid like this MG, you have two options of how you charge the battery. It will either charge as you drive along like a traditional hybrid, or you can actually plug it in to either a plug socket in the garage at home or one of the public chargers you can find out and about, and they can actually charge your battery that way as well. The added benefit you get from a plug-in hybrid is you can actually use it pure electric. So unlike a traditional hybrid, where it will cut in and out when it uses electricity, a plug-in hybrid, you can actually choose when you want full electric by a button on the center console. So that's the differences between a standard hybrid and a plug-in hybrid. And today, like I said, we're looking at the plug-in hybrid MGHS. This is the top of the range model and will set you back just over $51,000. And as we go around the car, you'll see where that value comes from with all the added inclusions that many manufacturers will obviously charge you more money for. So let's have a look around this MGHS Plus EV in essence specification, and I'll talk you through the good, the bad, and the ugly. So starting at the front then, uh, let's have a little bit of a look at the design of the car. Um, I actually think this is quite an attractive looking car. It's not Aston Martin attractive, but then it's also not ugly as well. It kind of sits in the middle ground really. Um, so yeah, quite an attractive looking thing. Uh, in terms of what's powering this, as I said, hybrid. So we start with a 1.5 litre turbocharged petrol engine uh, and a 90 kilowatt electric motor. And this is all front wheel drive. Uh, it's got a 10 speed automatic gearbox. Um, so in terms of all that, in terms of power output combined, it makes 189 kilowatt and 370 newton meters of torque. To put that in perspective, similar power output to a Volkswagen Golf GTI, which is a hot hatch. The 0 to 100 dash takes 6.9 seconds according to MG. And if you use a car in that fully electric mode, they claim you can do up to 63 kilometers pure electric. So for someone like myself who only lives 10 kilometers from work, I could do to and from work three days before I actually need to charge the battery. To charge the battery, you can either do it via standard plug in your garage. You can install a seven kilowatt uh, fast charger at home or you can go to some of the public charging outlets that you can find as you drive around. So there's different ways and you, can, you, know, you can actually um, charge the battery, but you can also charge it as you're driving along via the engine itself, uh, or when you're braking, it will feed power back into the battery. Um, so the, the benefits of that is unlike an electric car, you have to find a charging station to actually power the car. With this MG, you can actually charge it whilst you're driving. You haven't got to suddenly stop and think, oh, I've got to waste an hour charging the battery up on my Tesla or whatever electric car you've got. Um, this will do it as you're driving, uh, which gives you the benefit of obviously less downtime when you're driving on a long journey. Um, but also, yeah, you can just fill up with petrol as well if you uh, need to sort of get on the way pretty quickly. So coming around to the side of the car, and here we can see some of the inclusions you get on this Aston Tidal. Uh, so things like LED headlights, we've got 18 inch alloy wheels, uh, we also get this nice chrome surround around the windows uh, and also on the door handles, uh, silver roof rails, and we also get a full length panoramic sunroof, which for $51,000 or just over is actually really good value for money. You get some really nice inclusions on this car, um, more of which we'll see when we actually go inside. Coming around to the back of the car, and this is actually quite good looking as well. Um, it's not sort of too square and angular like some cars are these days. Um, we get LED tail lights again with the sequential indicators, which is quite a nice little touch. Uh, you've actually got twin exhaust as well, so it does look quite sporty. Um, the electric tailgate, which is standard. This opens up to quite a generous 451 litres of carrying capacity. It's a nice flat boot floor. The sides are nice and square, so you don't get all like wheel arch intrusions or anything like that. You can fold the back seats down as well, which then gives you nearly 1,300 litres of carrying capacity, which for a small car like this is actually a decent amount of space. 
under the boot floor we don't actually get a spare wheel unfortunately uh, we've got one of these sort of tire inflator kits uh, you do get the included power charge cable so you can plug it into the power socket in the garage um, if you want to then obviously go and use a public charger then you'd need to obviously go and buy a cable or use one of the chargers where they've got a tethered cable and all you do is drive in basically with your car and plug it in with the cable that's included with the machine so that's a bit about the outside of this mg I'm now going to go and have a look at the inside look at the fixtures and fittings and what features you get a standard but if you are enjoying this video give it a like share it with your friends subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell because there's some more mg content coming later this year as well plus some other bits and pieces from other manufacturers so join me for those videos but in the meantime let's have a look inside this mg right so let's jump inside the mg uh keyless entry is standard which you kind of expect in most cars these days uh, but it's still nice to see um beautiful interior we've got this really nice sculpted uh sort of leather and suede sport seats and uh, they really hug you in them very very comfortable as well now on the door trim here we've got the same sort of fake leatherish sort of material that you get on the seats plus this really nice stitch in here uh, and also up here as well uh, just the usual controls for your windows and your door mirrors uh, so that's pretty standard a decent sized storage bin down here uh, in the driver's door uh, sun cream there because it's a rather hot day today um, driver's seat is electric as well which is nice to see and you get a lot of bolster in here on the sides you've got a nice bit of suede up here as well um, so the interior first impressions is really really nice so let's jump in and have a proper look around at the interior of this mg so to start off with then a uh, nice leather wrapped steering wheel with the sort of flat bottomed uh, section there buttons up there for your radio uh, and then the screen in front of you which is the display in front of the driver the buttons feel a little bit marxic golf to me to be honest um, not that that's necessarily a bad thing uh, the push button start is just over here next to the air vent and we're going to turn that on because it's 28 degrees outside today and i want to put the air conditioning on um, but it gives me an excuse to show you uh, the startup uh, sort of display there on the dashboard uh, let me just turn down the air conditioning because that is gonna make it very loud how do we turn this down there we go that's better yeah so that's your digital display there in front of the driver um, gives you the normal sort of stuff like your speedo over that side on the right hand side as you can see just there as you're driving along in either hybrid or fully electric mode it will actually show you how much power you're using um, and then also bottom right hand corner there you can just see how much battery we've got on pure electric so it's currently saying I've got 60% range and that gives me 38 kilometers of, kilometers of pure electric driving um, so that's actually really cool so other than that we then step over to a 10.1 inch display here in the middle uh, so it's the normal sort of stuff you've got radio bluetooth navigation um, it's also where you can go in to adjust things like the car climate control as well but this to me is the weakest part of this car uh, i'm not going to lie you do have to use apple carplay or android auto with this system because particularly when you put in a navigation like an address into your nav it is so slow it feels a bit 1980s um but that's the worst bit about this car from i'm being brutally honest um apple carplay you do have to plug uh, your phone in so you need a cable uh, to be plugged into the USB as per what I've done just here uh, but once you've got the Apple CarPlay working it's absolutely fine um, the whole screen is literally from one side to the other so you've got a nice uh, size display uh, and it works perfectly well uh, the voice control is really good um, and it's just a nice sort of display so yeah ignore the built-in sat nav use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto um, other than that we've got the air vents there in the middle we then got a few buttons there uh, to operate some of the functions so you've got volume uh, that button there will take you to the home screen for the navigation system uh, that one will take you to the car settings then you've got your climate control uh, heated rear window and then front demis for your front windscreen just below that we then got a couple of usbs so the of the two you have to use the left one if you want to use apple carplay or android auto because the one on the right hand side is purely just for charging uh, then we've also got a 12 volt power socket too just below that then uh, we've got the gear stick which feels very bmw actually i have to say if you've ever driven a bmw 
and I've been lucky enough to have driven quite a few. Uh, the switch, you basically push the side in to release it from uh, from park. You know, the backwards for drive or forwards for reverse. But then the lever just self centers to the middle, and then you've got a park button at the top there to put the vehicle into park. So it is very BMW. Over to the left, we've got a button to open the electric tailgate. That button there will bring on the 360 cameras. And that's the button there, and I'm quite sure if you can see it quite properly, uh, the EV button. So that allows you to choose to put the car into fully electric mode. So the engine itself, the actual um, petrol engine, will cut out. And you'll just use the battery to drive pure electric. Uh, then we've got the electric parking brake and the auto hold for the parking brake. Uh, and then like a downhill descent control verse, uh, button there uh, for if you're going to go on any sort of off-roading. Then behind that we've got a little bit of storage as you can see here. Uh, I've got my sunglasses, I've got a GoPro in there. There's another little sort of cubby hole there. But the nice thing about that, if I just take these out for a second, is a little lid that covers everything up. So you can put stuff in there and hide it away when you uh, leave the car parked. Um, so yeah, nice little bit of cubby hole. But then obviously that becomes cup holders as well. We've then got an armrest which you can slide forwards as well. So if you've got shorter legs and need to sit a bit further forward like me, and then you can slide the armrest forward, which is a nice cool little feature. Um, underneath there, we also have got a bit of storage as well. Um, so yeah, nice little sort of cubby hole in there between the centre armrest. Um, but generally, when you look around the cabin, I think it's a really nice place to be. I'm very, very impressed. Uh, with the layout, with the quality of the materials, particularly when you look at stuff on top of here, it's nicely sort of softly padded. Um, not what you expect from a sort of a Chinese brand or for a car that only costs around $51,000. Uh, we can also see that full length panoramic sunroof there as well. The front section, as you can see, will tilt up and also will slide completely open, uh, whereas the rear section is fixed. Uh, there's also an internal blind as well, so you can stop the sun coming in on a hot day. Um, so to have that included, all included for this sort of money, I think it's fantastic. And as you can see, getting inside the back of the MG HS was relatively easy. The roof line is nice and high, so you don't have to duck down for fear of whacking your head on the, uh, the door sill there. But the door also opens nice and wide. So if you're putting a baby seat in the back or you're putting a baby into his baby seat, the door opens nice and wide so you can actually sort of do that really easily. In terms of actual leg space, I've got acres back here. Um, I'm lucky I'm only five foot six, so sitting behind my own driving seat is really comfortable. I can stretch my legs out. I've got loads of space. My feet fit under the driver's seat. That's really, really comfortable. I've still got a decent amount of headroom even with the sunroof um, there because you know, sunroofs normally uh, take away a couple of inches of headroom. We've got air vents here in the middle which is really nice so rear passengers get to feel the air conditioning uh, and down the bottom we've got a couple of USB outputs as well. It's nice with the, the light coming in, um, like the full length sunroof, all the light coming into the back of the car as well because it makes it nice and light and airy in here. Um, if you didn't have the sunroof, it'd still be okay, I reckon, because it's got a, quite a tall ceiling. Um, but just that extra light coming in makes it really nice and light uh, and not claustrophobic here in the back. We've got the usual isofix mounting points for child seats in the back, uh, as well as this fold-down armrest. And I like this sort of brushed aluminium look to the, uh, to the cup holders. Um, so you just literally push that button and they come open. You've got a couple of options there for cup holders. And then another little flap opens there as well for an extra storage compartment. So I've actually given this a fair bit of thought for people that are going to sit in the back um, and amenities for um, you know, drinks and storage and that type of thing as well. So the back passengers are really well catered for. The other thing that's quite nice is actually the quality of the materials that's used in this car. You often find that the materials in the back of the car start to get a little bit cheaper in terms of sort of like tops of the doors or armrests or the, the, the materials used on the seats. Um, but it's nice that actually it's the same as what you get in the front of the car. You still get this sort of padded leatherette sort of feel in the door pull. Um, there's small sort of storage bins down the bottom here. They're not quite as big as what you get in the front, uh, but still a little bit of storage in the door. You do get also a bit more storage on the back of the two front seats as well. Uh, so that's quite handy if you want to put a phone or a tablet or a book in there or something like that. Um, 
In terms of visibility for rear passengers, it's actually really good. Not only do you get the light from the sunroof, you've got decent sized rear windows, but you get a great view of between the front seats of what's going on ahead and lots of light coming in. Now a lot of cars this size, you tend to find you've got a big transmission tunnel in the middle, so whoever sits on the middle seat is a bit hampered because they've got to put their feet either side of that transmission tunnel. Nice thing about the MG, it does have a small transmission tunnel, but the person in the middle you can actually put your feet on top. So you're not sort of trying to put your feet either side and encroach onto the passenger space of the people who sat to your left and your right. So you can put your feet there in the middle and you actually get a decent view ahead as well. Right, so now we need to go and drive this thing really and uh, see what it's like out on the open road. Um, tell you my thoughts and opinions on how she drives. So yeah, let's get going. Like a lot of plug-in hybrids, starts off in electric mode um, and then just waits for the petrol engine to kick in as and when you need it, uh, which is really nice because it um, just makes for a nice, smooth, quiet start to your journey. So first impressions then, things you sort of pick up on is actually how nice the steering is, which might seem a little bit of a strange thing to discuss. But sometimes on sort of cars that are at the cheaper end of the market, the steering can be a little bit vague and you don't really know what's happening at the front wheels. But it's actually nice and direct. As you turn this steering wheel, you, you can feel the weight of what's happening beneath you. So you know exactly what's happening uh, with the front wheels as you steer and go in corners and that sort of thing. You do feel like you're sitting up quite high in this car. So I'm not particularly tall, I'm only five foot six, but I feel like I'm almost touching the ceiling. So anyone taller than me might think they've got to open the sunroof for actually um, fitting inside the car. Pretty quiet in here too, um, particularly when it's in electric mode. Is very, very quiet, obviously. Um, you can hear the odd bit of sort of noise from outside the car, depending on the road surface that you're driving on. Um, the tyres are pretty good, Michelin tyres on this thing as well, which is quite impressive. So you don't get a lot of road noise from the tyres. Performance is pretty sprightly. We have got 189 kilowatt, so you'd imagine you'd uh, have a fair bit of get up and go. But you get that instant sort of like acceleration from the electric motor as well. So that combined power of 189 kilowatts, you can definitely feel it. It's got a good sort of punch um, to the engine, good acceleration. And it just gets you going where you need to sort of pretty quickly. You actually sit quite high in the driver's seat of this MG. The downside to that is you feel like your head is almost touching the ceiling. But the upside is you've got great visibility going forward. Um, it's a bit of a mixed bag, but yeah, the fact that you can see so far in front with the traffic and you feel like you're sat up um, sort of nice and high is actually really nice. One thing that has impressed me with this car is actually the build quality. I wasn't really expecting great things because, yeah, sometimes cars at the cheap end of the market cut corners here and there just to sort of save money. But all the materials that MG have used with this car feel decent quality feels very well screwed together i haven't had any rattles in the week that i've had this car uh, so it's actually really really impressive uh, and give me a really good opinion of mg as a brand it's got decent safety equipment as well um, you get six airbags a standard we've got things like blind spot monitor adaptive cruise control lane keeping aid rear cross traffic alert plus those 360 cameras so in a car costing this much money you actually get decent safety equipment as well so there you have it then, that's the review of the MG HS plug-in hybrid. I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you have give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. If you've got any questions or comments about this car, feel free to leave them in the comments section for me below and I'll answer them as soon as I can for you. 
Uh, in the meantime, just leaves me to say thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and look forward to seeing you all with the next one.